is happening guys, my name's Stingy, welcome back to the channel, if you're new around here make sure you smash that subscribe button. Today I've got a very important box, it's the care package that I've received from Torp Motors for my new Ultra B. This is going to really step up the power, I'm so excited to get it installed. Today I'm going to show you how to install it, how to set it up and exactly what it does. It promises to increase your power from 12.5 kilowatts to almost 20 kilowatts and it takes your top speed up to an astronomical figure. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to see exactly how fast my Ultra V is. But there's one thing I want to do first, and that's that the stock graphics and the stock seat cover are really, really looking a bit boring and plain. So I'm going to quickly swap those over to a new set of graphics, a new seat cover, and then we'll get on and install this. But there's one thing spoiling it, definitely this seat. Look at that, so nice. So inside the box, I have a top jersey, which was extra. You have your wiring loom with three connections for the bike. You have your controller unit itself in the box, a little sachet of dielectric grease. You have a Torp Motors heatsink, which is lovely, CNC metal, and your quick start guide. Now I do have a discount code from Torp Direct, which is Stingy5. So the first step in installing this controller is to remove the seat and lift up the battery lid. This just makes it easier to access the screws on the back panel, which hold in the wires. Then you want to take a 4mm Allen key and unscrew the four bolts holding the controller on and then there's two larger bolts below where it meets the bash guard. So now once you've undone the last two screws on the bottom you want to lever and pull the OEM bash guard forward revealing the phase wires on the back as well as the positive and negative wires. There's these little orange rubber boots covering the bolts which make it a little bit tricky to undo these um, bolts at first but once you get the hang of it it's quite simple you just got to pull those back with your fingers to 90 degrees that allows you to get your allen key in. So you repeat this process for all five bolts on the back and as you can see they are colour coded so you've got the blue and the yellow there, the torque matches up perfectly, it has B, G and Y for blue, green, yellow and then plus is red and negative is black. Once you've got all of these unplugged you want to follow your wires down so the first black cable goes down to the hall sensor or uh, hall connector, unplug this. The second connection runs up the top behind the horn and that is the bike adapter so you want to undo these four screws on the back plate like this and you will then be able to access the other connector and give you some space to work. Now the torque loom is really good, it has a ECU which will go inside the bike and allows you to use your standard switch gear, it keeps all your modes active. Um, but yeah, it's really simple because there's only two connections and they are male and female so you can't mix them up, one's male, one's female. After this, you're ready to plug in your main torque device but it is very important that you hear a distinct click on both these connections. Once you've done this, you can just reinstall those four screws holding on the back plate, securing the wires. Now it's time to install the Torp unit itself to the heatsink using the screws supplied. So there's six in total, two at the bottom, two in the middle and two at the top. You can't really mix them up and you don't want to do them up too tight. Just use the supplied Allen key, that way you can't put too much force and leverage on it because these screws are quite delicate with small heads and they're easy to strip. I also just want to quickly say, I know it doesn't really matter much on the Ultra B, but there is a significant weight difference between these two. The top is much lighter. Okay, very important here. Make sure you use this dielectric grease to fill this main connector before you plug it in. And again, here you want to hear a click, a very distinct click. Once you've got this done, that will hold the controller in place. Now you can tuck up your connections that are blanked off, which are the two with the yellow bungs in them and then reinstall the phase wires in the correct order so match up the colours to the letters on the back of the controller and also the positive and negative. Again, positive is red, negative is black. Then reinstall the six screws holding the controller on. Two shorter ones go at the bottom. Okay guys, so we've just booted up the Torp app. I'm gonna turn the bike on. It's automatically connecting. I'm not gonna take you through the whole calibration step because it's very easy. It does it all for you. Here is where you select your power levels, your battery, um, 
Talk make it very easy. They have all the options here. So stock Ultra B, bypass Ultra B, 72 volt aftermarket or 80 volt aftermarket. Today we're just going to be using the stock battery. As you can see, we have the standard battery in the bike. This aftermarket lid is for a future project, but for now we're using the standard battery. So in sport mode, here we have set to 14 kilowatts, but we're going to turn that up as high as it goes. So we're going to be actually reaching 19.3 kilowatts, 800 amp phase and unlimited RPM. Eco and daily, I'm going to leave the same. So there we go. So yeah. The top app is as easy as that. When you initially boot it up, it just asks you to go through the calibration process. You lift the wheel off the floor, it will spin backwards and forwards a few times, and then it asks you to full throttle, then let off, and that is it. That's everything you have to do with this bike. It's fantastic. The controller keeps your uh, the sensors for your kickstand and your brake lever still functioning, which is one of my favorite parts about this. It also keeps your standard display and your standard switch gear for all your modes. It's fantastic. So without further ado, we're going to head out now. I'm going to head to the little bit of straight road where I usually test all my bikes. If you're an old subscriber, you'll know I tested the torque for the Sauron Light be there as well. So yeah, let's get on with it. So guys, we're here at my little straight bit of road where I test out all my bikes. I've tested my Talaria, my Sauron with the torque here. I've set the power to 19.3 kilowatts, 800 phase amps, unlimited RPM. We've got a 2118 set of wheels on here. So with the standard wheel set, this bike got up to 53 and a half miles per hour GPS, which on the screen said 58 miles per hour. Since then, I've gone into the app, adjusted it for this wheel set. So 27 inches for anyone wondering, this is an 18 inch Michelin Tracker, 100, 190, uh, 100, 118. So this speedo now reads completely accurate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna see what speed I get up to when I get to the bottom. So this is round number one. It is so much faster. This is actually shocking how much of an improvement the torque alone makes on this stock battery setup. And if you had smaller, sort of original wheels or lighter wheels, maybe you get them way faster than this again. Okay, top speed test. Wheel spinning at 40. 61, 63, 65, 66, 68, 70. That is so fast. I need to find a longer bit of road. I've run out of road. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around the corner, find a longer stretch of road where I can really stretch its legs and see what this can do. I know it's got it in it. blown away with the capability of that standard battery. This is with no other modifications, just putting the top on, connecting it to the app. And the fact that this controller is so easy to install and set up, you can literally be up and running in 30 to 45 minutes. So yeah, beginner friendly, and very easy to work out. Looks, everything looks completely factory. You would not be able to tell the difference. I did go out on this exact setup yesterday and I achieved 24 miles and I got back with 25% charge. So. You could possibly see maybe 27 to 28 miles if you're hammering it like I was on the trails. And if you take it easy, your range is not going to differ from stock that much because you can just dial the power mode down and cruise. If you've enjoyed today's video, guys, please drop me a like. Tell me what you want to see me do to this bike next. As you can see, we've added some lovely WGT silver parts, the wheels, the graphics, the seat cover, new battery lid just for aesthetics. But yeah, stay tuned. And as always, my name's Stingy and I'll see you next week.